Oh, so this is episode three. Uh, we're, we're, we're starting the show right now. What the hell are you doing? Get over here. God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that just reminded me. I, I went to 7-Eleven right before I came here to get an energy drink and some batteries. And Ooh, they're... I'm almost 40 and I drink energy drinks. You do too. I know. I was talking about myself. Oh. <laughs> I got no blast. We put the past on blast. Hit them with the truth with things you never knew. Nobody is safe. No thing to place. Got Joel and Cook with history in your face. I got a blast. Welcome to the Iconoblast podcast. This is the show that takes a look behind the public facades of famous icons to show you why you can never take anything at face value. My name is Cooper, and across from me, as always, is... Are you wearing a jackass shirt? Yes, sir. When did you get that? Uh, when the new jackass came out. I felt like it was time. Oh. I've always wanted one, but I got the original. You never had one before? No, they're expensive, and I've been poor my whole life until now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, so, and I went back. Well, that's, still, I got a, I got an a old-school MTV shirt, and then I got... Well, like a, a Yo! MTV Raps like T-shirt? Like the old school, just the MTV logo on the oh. front, rainbow colors, and then I got this. I've been a Jackass fan since before Jackass exists. Back in the CKY days. Yeah. Yeah, I... It's too bad I, the band was the one that went crazy. I I don't know. I kind of saw that coming. Oh, well, yeah. I think everybody he saw was, it coming. Yeah, he was the only one that could dish out the jokes and not take the jokes. That always... Like, he was... But that's he was my, sign of a He was my psychopath. least favorite part of... Of Jackass, just because... Yeah, but like, I came from CKY, so I loved him. In CKY, I think he was better. A little bit better at it. But even but, in those, you could see that he was cutting out his anger problems. Mm. But yeah. not his drinking problems. Oh, no. he. I, as far as I know, he still hasn't cut out his drinking problems. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't actually drank himself to death yet. Yeah, his all his family's huge and all drunks, and they all survive. So he's got good genes, drinking genes. True, Drink. bad genes, but good for drinking. <laughs> Something like that. I still haven't I mean, seen the new Jackass, which is embarrassing. Uh, I I haven't either. I've watched I haven't every seen... episode of Jackass. I've watched every episode of of uh, what, the, what do they call it? The one with Steve O and Chris Wild Pontius, Boys. Wild Boys. I liked Wild Boys I more than Jackass movies. actually. I watched all the the bonus movies, the two point one. Or you the, watched the WrestleMania with with the guys from the only, Jackass. I bought WrestleMania because Jackass was. On. <laughs> yeah. I did they announce that ahead of time? Because I yeah, J- I Johnny, didn't hear about if it. If you follow Johnny Knoxville on Instagram, you would know. That's the only reason why I knew. Oh yeah, I. Uh, I they promoted I don't the movie. Follow many people on Instagram. Johnny Knoxville was going on WWE to promote the film, and like started a grudge with some wrestler I don't know, and then they fought at WrestleMania. That was the the redheaded dude. I guess I don't remember the guy that. Uh, well, the the, the one, one that, that we man, we man body, body slammed. slammed. Hell yeah, fucking awesome. That, actually, that guy <laughs> looks surprisingly like the topic for today's show, which is Vikings Part Three. Right. Okay. Vikings again. Yep. Well, this one's sort of an addendum to the previous two episodes with Josh because Josh yeah. had so much. Yeah knowledge that like it eventually i didn't even have to go off the notes anymore it was just like okay well it, no, yeah, I, tell I, us about vikings i remember when you're like you know what i don't even need the fucking notes and I, you just kind of toss the notes aside that was sweet <laughs> like it looked cool like from my side of the table i was like oh shit that oh was, really that I, was a cool move coop I, was like fuck it <laughs> that's that's and exactly you how it went rubbing down. your clit and and all that but anyway so this is we're actually going to go through the notes that you wrote to get some hard yeah, we're going to go through so the the stuff that we covered in enough detail in the previous two episodes, mm. I'm just going to leave those parts out, but some of the other little factual the tidbits. Nooks and crannies. Uh, we're going to fill in the nooks and crannies on on this episode. Yeah. So, one of the things that I think we briefly went over was the fact that and I'm I'm sure that we mentioned it on the show before is the fact that the Vikings well not See, I, it, it bothers me now when I say Viking, because unless they're specifically raiding, they're not Viking. They're not Vikings. Vikinging. But uh, uh, going a Viking. Going a Viking. Yeah. Someone left a comment. It was funny. Uh, that was like, you know, for a Viking episode, not that much talking about Viking, <laughs> Vikings. And uh, I replied, and I was like. Have you ever listened um, to the show before? Well, no. I said if Josh if Josh Barnett 
No, I, said, I think I said the War Master. If the War Master wants to talk about D&D and horror movies, then the War Master is going to talk about D&D and, and horror movies. And the person, I don't even know who the person is, and it was kind of a dick comment. He replied <coughs> something like, understood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were not in control of those episodes. No. Dude, the, the fucking, the live demonstration he did is so fucking funny, dude. It's I still great, haven't, great I still haven't watched the video for that, but I'm yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, you gotta watch it, yeah. That's great. <clears throat> uh, but something that we have mentioned on the show before is that Scandinavian explorers beat Christopher Columbus to the Americas, which, as we've also covered, Christopher Columbus never set foot on mainland North America. But Vikings did. Or South America. Vikings did. One Were they Viking, going uh, a Viking? No, they were just exploring at that point. because so Vikings then they weren't were, Vikings. Vikings were, uh, well, yeah, see, I, I can't say Vikings. Scandinavians right. were very the, prolific explorers. I'm sticking to it. They're Vikings. Okay, we'll just, we'll call them Vikings. Fuck it. We'll drink for it to be, it's culturally in, inappropriate. We're, we're culturally inappropriating the term Inapp- Vikings. <laughs> yeah. A merchant by the name of Bjarni Herjolfsson claimed to have sighted an unknown landmass after being blown off course southeast of Greenland. Mm. A young upstart named Leif Erikson heard the merchant's claims and saw it as an opportunity to make his famous father proud. You know his, who his daddy was? Leif Erikson's yeah. daddy? Eric the Red. Mm. He was the one who discovered Greenland. Yeah. I think he may have discovered Iceland also, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I wasn't there. Uh, I was, but it was so long ago I can barely remember, <laughs> and I was so fucking smashed off a of mead that so, I couldn't even see straight. So stoned. Leif purchased Bjarni's ship and gathered 35 men to join him on the voyage to the newly found land. Sometime around 1000 AD, Leif and his crew made landfall in the aptly named portion of Canada known as Newfoundland. You know, new, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Yeah. It's a clever name. And what's clever name? fucking Bernie? Vikings. Uh, Bjarni was the merchant, but Bjarni. but Leif Erikson yeah. was the person leading the expedition. Bjarni, he sounds like a descendant of Ani. He sounds like a an ancestor of the drunk character from The Simpsons. <laughs> Once ashore, Leif had his men build an encampment, encampment which he named Leif's Boothier, or Leif's Booth. Leif's Booth. The expedition camped out for the winter months before returning home to tell everyone what they found on their journey. And although reportedly rich in resources, the Vikings never returned to Leifsbooter, and the exact location of their landing has never been determined. So they have found some Viking artifacts in that general area. They they have a rough idea of where Leifsbooter used to be, but they don't know exactly where. They've just found, Mm. like, you know, Viking shit all over the place. Leaf's booter. Leaf's booty. I'd never go there. That sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> now, reaching Canada is impressive enough for illiterate farmers from Scandinavia. You used to be able to walk there from Europe, right? To Canada? Yeah. I mean, you could walk to Alaska Isn't from that the, Asia. Oh, is that the walk? Yeah, the, I'm thinking the of? land bridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was from, like, the easternmost part of Russia into Alaska. Oh, okay. And that's why you can see you can see Russia from Sarah Palin's house. <laughs> that was an okay. old ass joke. That, that was like what, I like the accent. 2008. It was supposed to be like a Sarah Palin accent, yeah. which I think she's Midwestern. It was cute though. Thank you. <laughs> Reaching Canada is impressive enough for illiterate farmers from Scandinavia, but evidence has been found that may prove the Vikings didn't stop there. How far, you may ask? How far? All the way to the asshole of America. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. You knew I was going to say Oklahoma. I knew that. Oak. Oklahoma is the asshole of America. I've been there, and it's the asshole of America. No offense to anybody that lives in Oklahoma. What's What's a big city in Oklahoma? Oklahoma City. <laughs> Wait, isn't isn't Oklahoma Oklahoma City in Kansas? No, Kansas City is in Missouri. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's Oklahoma City. Um, is that where a bombing happened? Uh, I believe it was the Oklahoma City bombing that took place in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma. City. Oklahoma. Yeah, Timothy the McVeigh. State. They never caught the co-conspirators from the Oklahoma City bombing. Sick. Sick. <laughs> Timothy McVeigh was also a white supremacist. I, I've sick. mentioned it on the show before that. 
I think, okay, so aside from the fact that Timothy McVeigh killed a shitload of people and he was a white supremacist, the thing that bothers me the most is his obsession with the band, the band Bad Company. Oh, no. And My the album loves that band. The album Bad Company by Bad, by Company. Bad Company featuring the song, the song called Bad, Bad Company. Company, which he played in the tank that he served in that he named Bad Company. Ugh. Have you ever that, heard of a hat on a hat? My mom loved that song. Really? Yeah. What you just said was just like flashbacks of like the worst days where my mom was pissing me off as a as a teenager. By playing Bad Company by Bad Company off of the album Bad Company? Yes. At least you weren't writing in the tank called Bad Company. And she was so into it. Like, you know, like the person at a concert that's too drunk that's just got their eyes closed and they're just in the zone and no one gives a shit. <laughs> She did that all the time while driving. <laughs> it's a miracle you survived this long. Yeah. In the Poto, po, Poto, P O T E A U, mountains of Oklahoma. I don't know how to pronounce it. The, the Potato Mountains of Oklahoma. <laughs> potato. <laughs> there is a 12 foot by 10 foot slab of rock called the Heaven or Runestone. Yeah, when the rune stone, yeah. Carved into the I stone. Jerked off onto it one time. <laughs> is that is that how the runes were actually carved? As Arnold was just beating his meat. It, yeah. Carved into the stone are eight runes which don't match any of the indigenous language from the area. What? They do, however, match a writing system from Scandinavia during the early Middle Ages, known as Elder Futhark. Holy shit! So we, they really did go all the way to the mid Midwest. Theoretically, it, it's, they probably went. All it's the never way. been pro- proven. Oh, the Vikings went all the way a lot. They fucked everybody. That's so cool. They had a. They probably had a little camp on in Ventura. Oh, I'm I'm sure they did. They they went and they loved the beach. You think they made it all the way around and shit? Uh, I think that it's highly likely that they made it further Traveled into North America world. than than we're aware of. Uh, I That's don't know so cool. if. If they got all the way to the East Coast, that would have been like one hell of an expedition for them. But uh, I I think it's plausible that that they made it all the way to Oklahoma. I don't know why the fuck they would go to Oklahoma though. I don't know why the fuck anybody goes to Oklahoma. Wait, so wait, they came, I only went there because I had the west to. Side? No, they would have landed on the East Coast. Yeah, you said made it all the way to the East Coast. Oh, you meant West Coast. Did I say East Coast? I, I thought, thought you said, said East Coast. Coast, so I got all confused. Oh, I Back thought I to said the land West Coast. walk, and I'm like, wait, did they land walk? Yeah. Yeah, it would have been. They a... made it all the way, dude. Uh, I mean, they might have. They... I mean, if if we could do it, then they for sure could do it. I don't think either one of us could walk all the way across America. Hell yeah. Well, I, I meant our ancestors. Oh, oh, ancestors, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Not me. I'll walk I, across America. I got winded walking in from the parking lot today. But in my defense, there's a set of stairs going into the studio. Yeah, we can and walk. I'm in horrible shape. <laughs> we should do it. We should walk across America together. We bring a couple some equipment. We do our episodes over while we're on the run. Why don't we just drive? Walking is is crazier. Yeah, it's insane. But we, it might take a year because we're old and out of shape. I think it would probably take more than a But We'd be a super year. in shape by the time we got to the end. We would get, we'd we have would great get so fucking distracted along the way. We'd have nice asses. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. I'll do anything to fix my fucked up ass. It is worse than mine, to be honest. Oh, no, I know. That's, I have, but I have gotten only that, if I uh, shaved mine. I have gotten that, that input from many different people. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Elder Futhark is a germ- Germanic writing system used between the second and eighth centuries, which was pri- which was the primary form of written language in Scandinavia during the Viking Age. Yeah, the translation of the runes on the Hevner Stone are still up for debate, but most variations roughly translate to Little Valley. It's cute, Little Valley. Vikings wouldn't call it that. Uh, they would have called it like Blood Valley or something like. Yeah, yeah it's most likely fake. Maybe that was their. Like slang for vagina. <laughs> so it meant like cunt valley. So they should call it the pussy stone. Pussy stone, yeah. The pussy stone in the potato mountains of Oklahoma. It's a learning show. <laughs> the pussy stone in the potato mountains <laughs> of Oklahoma City. Some Bombing. historians believe the runes weren't carved by Scandinavian explorers, but by Swedish railroad workers sometime in the 19th century. However... Like, 
Swedish, like Pippi Longstocking. Just like Pippi Longstocking. Yeah, which, which, thank I, you so much for that episode, Coop. I cannot believe that you had my estranged brother on the show. Oh, you're twins, so it's hard to tell. Him and I, I didn't know, have, I didn't know I it was your brother. not spoken to each other in decades. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Coop. The last time I had any interaction with him was when he kicked me in the nuts in the womb, and I was like, fuck this guy. I'm never talking to him again. Yeah. That makes sense. The theory of the Hevner runestone being carved by Swedish railroad workers doesn't stand up to scrutiny, as the local Choctaw uh, Choctaw tribe claimed the stones were already there upon their arrival in the 1800s. To this day, the uh, authenticity of the runestones has yet to be proven. So, I mean, it, it could have been carved by Swedish railroad workers. It's it a lot cooler Vikings. to think that the Vikings, Vikings went there, but I just can't think of any reason that, that the Vikings would go to fucking Oklahoma. Well, they don't know at the time what it is. Oh, yeah, they didn't know any better. Oh, okay, yeah, so no, that to me that makes sense. Yeah. I didn't know any better when I went to Oklahoma, Why but I learned know? my lesson to go to basic training. went to Fort Sill, mm-hmm. Oklahoma. Did you get raped? No, that's if if that's that would have happened, I would have been like, "Oh, this place is all right." I understand. No, it's just nothing but but flat red, red brown landscape, rednecks and dry grass, <laughs> flat and brown, just like my ass. As far as appearances the, go, <laughs> not the skin. <laughs> it ain't brown. It's stained brown from all the all the all the poopy pants. Well, yeah, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch my ass. That's gay. True. As far as appearances go, pretty much everything about the pop culture Viking is wrong. Scandinavian raiders looked less like the homoerotic metal sensation Man-O-War and more like other regular-ass dudes from their time period. Tunics, simple leather shoes, and loose-fitting pants were what the average man would wear on a daily basis. The peasants in Monty Python and the Holy Grail were more historically accurate than the average movie Viking. That makes sense. Yeah, it would just be... Except for when they're Vikinging. Even when they were when Viconing. they were out of Viking, it, well, I, I think Viking is the or Vikining. Okay, we'll say Vikining. Uh, even, Viking is dumb. Even when they were, no one out, says I'm going a shopping today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a shopper, right? So I'm a Vikinger. I'm going to go a I'm shopping. A... I don't know. It's it's like old timey speak. They didn't know any better. They were illiterate. That's why. That's why it's confusing if it's true or not. Uh, even when they were going out on raids and things like that, they they were just wearing their work clothes. They didn't have any uniforms or anything like that, so they would just be wearing whatever they would wear on a daily basis. The yeah. the dudes who right. had more money would have like some that's what Josh was saying leather like armor people or would something buy borrow shit or rent shit from rich people yeah to do their raids and then they'd owe them something yeah because that type of shit that's that makes sense it's not if you're not using it on a regular basis which they they would only go out and raid like during the summers so for the rest of the time they were just farmers so spending a bunch of money on on like armor and a helmet and a shield and a sword mm-hmm. it's not going to make them any money it'd be better to, it's like you yeah, know, it's heavy renting a car to to go somewhere uh, if or we were, renting if we were t- Vikings together, we and we had one set of armor. We would like split it off. What we would take turns wearing it. Well, no, we would split it down. Like we'd like play a game or something and make bets on who gets what. Like I ima- <laughs> like I just imagined. I get the cod piece. No, I get the cod piece. God damn it! Rock like, paper. Literally, scissors. I was imagining. I just have the cod piece and the helmet, and you have the shoulder pads and like the uh, elbow pads, and knee pads, and the nipple tassels, and the nipple tassels. And the butt plug. That's because the the nipple tassels and the butt plug were the only part that I actually saved up the money for. <laughs> those you, those, those make, are already yours. Th- those make me money outside of raiding. Those are those are on when you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish I had a cod piece. I've always wanted one. Oh, buy one. Yeah, but you don't really think about it like that. Like it, it, I feel like it's like a leather jacket. Like. In my world. You own a leather jacket. But I Why don't you own a cod piece? I didn't buy a leather jacket. I didn't go get one. Like, there's a thing about leather. You, like, earn your leathers. You have to You have to steal it from Bill Paxton out Just, in front of a bar. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, they're passed down. They're, like, it's part of, like, history. It's like a Viking culture, but it's, it's Leatherman culture or something. It's, I have a lot of respect for leather. It's leather daddy culture. <laughs> yeah, leather daddy culture. You come from a long line of leather daddies. I can't if I just buy a cod piece, 
I will wear it, but it won't mean anything to me. It's who it gets passed to that will really appreciate it. So you'd be so, making an investment for future generations of your family yeah, but by I don't being care the about first that. one I need to someone, own a cod piece. That would be a family heirloom. I understand that, but I want to be passed. I want a cod piece to be passed down to me. You want to wear somebody else's old cod piece? Yes. <laughs> I want it to mean something. I want there to be a story. I'm not going to I'm not going to kink shame you for that. This fucking dick pad killed helped kill thousands of people and now Joel this dick pad is yours <laughs> that's the cod piece I want I use want Conan use copy. it wisely or a movie because cod with piece. a great cod piece comes great responsibility and if probably I could get some Conan's cod. cod piece I'd wear that every day I don't think Conan wore a cod piece he he's wore like a, a cod piece. like a speedo no he's got a cod piece does he what's a cod piece to you it, I mean a, a cod piece is like literally it's just armor for a your dick decorative well, I mean it's not even like it's on it's, the a lot yeah, of Conan times, it's, a, it's just a cod piece. decorative. It's not even really armor. It's like some beads dangling down, and there's like a fluffy thing around it, and then that, like a skull. That's his dick, balls, and pubic hair. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's weird looking. But I could turn that into a cod piece. <laughs> <laughs> Despite their depiction in films like The 13th Warrior... Vikings weren't any more disgusting than the average teenager. They were actually less disgusting than the average teenager that I'm aware of. Better hygiene? Much better. They had, mm. they had the best hygiene of, like, any of their contemporaries. No shit. Compared to their contemporaries, they were actually downright clean freaks. Once they began integrating into English society, they were ridiculed for their insistence on bathing every Saturday. Nerds! Oh, they had a tradition to shower once a week? Yeah, just like us. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> We're Vikings. I shower once or twice a week, unless the lady's in town, then then it's every day. Well, you have to because of all the sex juices. Mm. The word Saturday even roughly translates to washing day in many modern Germanic languages. Oh, wow. So Saturday was washing day. So they really only showered once a well. Not even showered, but they cleaned they would, once a they week. They would bathe once a week, but everybody else from the time period would do it like Maybe once Sometimes. a year. So that's it. Everyone smelled like shit. History literally smells like shit and rotting flesh. Those, you, those were the smell dominant like, smells throughout history. Was, it's like people with, with shit dogs. and rotting flesh. No, like when you go to some, if you don't have dogs and you go to a place with dogs, or like people that smoke, if you, if someone smokes inside their house and you don't smoke, you like, you can't even stand it in there. It's smell blindness. That's, yeah. you know, there's actually... So that's actually... how it was back then. Like, you don't need to shower. If everyone stinks the same, what the fuck are you showering for? There's actually... It's it's beneficial in terms of being around a bunch of smelly people, but there's also an evolutionary benefit to it where... To so not imagine, No, to, to ignoring a smell. If you're around a smell for long enough, you stop smelling it. Yeah. The reason that... So picture a, a rabbit sitting in a a bush of really fragrant flowers. If all it's able to smell are the flowers and it can't smell the coyote that's walking up to it, it's, it's going to get eaten. But if its brain can ignore the smell of the flowers it and just pick out smells else. different from that, then that it, it's got a, a better survival yeah. chance. Isn't cleaning also in the long run, uh, less healthy because those motherfuckers probably, you could probably eat shit back then and be fine. Like their tolerance, you know, it's like when you like germs and, and getting your hands dirty and getting sick makes you stronger. Like once you, if you get a cold, you don't get that cold again. You build your immune system to a certain point, uh, being around like, uh, you want to, <coughs> you want to build up your immunity. Kids who grow up in a household with dogs have better immune systems than kids who grow up in a household without dogs because they're exposed to they're more exposed germs. To more bullshit. But if you have like rancid crotch rot, that's not going to well, yeah. that's not going to help your immune you system. So somewhere. you got to you got to splash some but water on the me, balls every now and then. That. Oh no, I I can and I have. <laughs> While the good Christian men and women of England were covering the smell of their rotting teeth and sickly bodies with expensive perfumes, the pagans were washing away their God-given stench with barbaric soap and water. They made their own soap? Uh, I mean, probably something out of, like, lye and animal fat, and, or probably they were just scrubbing themselves with water. Uh, oh, I, I highly doubt that. It 
probably like was the, like those companies caustic. now that are making like the or, like the old school organic soaps that are like kind of rough. Yeah, those are those are hipster companies cashing in on people thinking that there's something special about artisan bullshit. I haven't tried it yet, but it seems like it's more old school. Yeah, right? old, like old all the new soaps necessarily and mean deodorants like just better. cause cancer now. I mean, everything it's got causes metal cancer, in it, but not original soap that the Vikings made. Well, back then, Josh texted me that earlier. Okay, well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna contradict <laughs> that because I don't need the war master showing up at my door. Do you remember when the war master gave my microphone a blowjob? Is that a euphemism? But I, I, he did though. Do you you need to tell me something? He did. Anything you want to talk about? I can still smell him on this. Where mic. did the war master touch you? Anywhere he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere I asked him to. Archaeologists studying Scandinavian burial sites often find toiletry kits that include razors, combs, tweezers, and even small spoons for cleaning the ears. Adding to their reputation as vain pretty boys was their use of makeup. They wore makeup. The Vikings? Mm Mm-hmm. Whoa. Both men and women were known to use heavy eye makeup to get those smoky bedroom eyes while slaughtering their enemies and seducing the women. Scary. Uh, It probably would have been a little intimidating. While the eyeliner served the purpose of cutting down glare from the sun, it was also considered highly attractive. Ooh, I like this. What what did they use for makeup? Like, just charcoal? Yeah, it was probably just, like, soot mixed with animal fat. Uh, I don't know about Probably animal fat. Semen. Yeah. Blonde hair is often associated with Vikings and Scandinavians in general, and this is actually partially accurate but only partially. That being said, keeping a recessive gene in a society of top-notch poon hounds is practically impossible, so brown eyes and hair were more common than not. Hair on the brown eye. Yeah, they, they all had hair on the brown eye. Still, blonde hair was considered ideal at the time, so those not naturally blessed with golden locks would use a mixture containing lye to bleach their hair. Vikings bleached their hair and wore eyeliner. That's crazy. They're essentially like trophy wives. But the men and women did that. Both what, the men and women, yeah. I mean, that seems lame, but what was the reason? Just because it looked cool. It was just the style. It was what was attractive? Mm-hmm. Or did they did they consider it, like, to be intimidating? No, I think it was just For, considered... Intimidate your enemies because you look different and fucking crazy, but also because it's... Well, there's... Sec- because it does that, you're turned on when you're a part of it? The... The people that they would have had the most, like the enemies that they would have had the most common interactions with, would have been other Scandinavians. So, so they were different. It wasn't. Well, no, they. I mean, they were like the, the first punks. All of the, all of the Scandinavian cultures would have been doing something similar to this. So it's not like they were going to intimidate anybody by having blonde hair with eyeliner on. It was more like that looked good. It was the style. We're cooler than you. <laughs> was it sexy or was it like badass? Uh, I guess who I, knows. I think it was a. I mean, Both? The, the two were kind of interchangeable. Fuck yeah, they are. You ever seen Guns N' Roses? God, yeah. <laughs> so, what do a bunch of well dressed, blonde haired, blue eyed pretty boys do with all of those good looks? Fuck. They bang everyone's wives. And they literally did that. They spent so much time balls deep in other men's wives, it was documented by their contemporaries. In a record written in 1220... Raping? Uh, no, no. I, like they, well, I mean, they did their fair share of raping also, but there was a lot of women that but were just, just down they just looked so hot it. with their eyeliner and, and bleached I mean, hair. They're, they're tall, muscular, so, blonde hair, eyeliner, they're well-groomed. They're like the... They're like the uh, like the boy band. Of they were middle aged, like boy bands. They, they were the the fuck boys of the middle ages. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Maybe that's the title of this episode: the Vikings, the fuck boys of the middle ages. Holy shit! They were get, making themselves look as hot as they could, so they could fuck mm-hmm. and I'm, kill. I mean, that's that's pretty much how things are now. In twelve twenty, John Wallingford sure. wrote. Quote, the Vikings were in the habit of combing their hair every day 
to bathe every Saturday, to change their clothes frequently to draw attention to themselves by means of many such frivolous whims. In this way, they sieged the married women's virtue and persuaded the daughters of even noblemen to become their mistresses. What's that a quote from? John Wallingford in 1220. Hmm. He was just saying, like, dude, these Vikings are are sexy and they're fucking everybody's wives and daughters, and I hate it. (laughs) But he he respected it. I think he probably just hated it. I mean, they would have thought that they were were all, like, barbaric pagans. So that would be this... Equal to, like, a bunch of Hollywood actors moving to Austin and fucking all the chicks here. So, uh, like the what's happening current here. reality, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was actually the the end of the first part of, of a two-part series that we didn't get around to because we had <laughs> so much fun drinking the, the War Master whiskey and, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. talking shop with Josh. Now we're getting into part two. The Vikings weren't exceptionally large or smelly or savage, but they did at least wear horned helmets and carry massive axes and swords. Okay. Except the helmets didn't have horns. The axes were small, and only the rich could afford a sword. Hmm. So none of that's none of that's actually true. I think there was a there there had to have been like this is what I was trying to say on the episodes with Josh is maybe they not everybody was huge like we picture them but the ones that were doing the fighting probably were yeah and the that's... ones that like were successful at raiding and doing all that shit got more and more stuff they they found more shit the ones that survived those were the ones that were wrecking shop and they were probably a little bit better they they were the elite of the of the yeah that's uh i mean i actually group i would think that considering uh, i mean we did talk to josh about this a little bit um, and I've been thinking about it since then. And honestly, I, I don't think that on average the Vikings were like six feet tall. But plus, the ones that were doing the work I think probably there, were. Uh, there were. It's the uh, same like anything. Like the, the average height of, a, of, of an American is a certain shit, but all the basketball players are fucking seven feet tall. So yeah, you there, have your, there's your definitely going to be villages, and the ones that are doing the attacking are the biggest and strongest ones. There's definitely going to be outliers find. for yeah. sure, and I think the and those the larger sort of and fucking... more intimidating ones were going to be the ones that were more successful. But and I, fucking more. the way that I see it is, if you look at so if you if you look at the average Navy SEAL, they're usually big dudes, muscular, you know. Taller than the average. Yeah, but if you look at like Delta Force operators or something like that, or they the look more guys. like like long distance runners. Yeah, like they're they're smaller, they're more wiry, they've got a lot of stamina, and I think that that would honestly be what the average Viking raiding uh, raiding party would be made up of is small, wiry, muscular guys. Right, but then you got your three <laughs> giant intimidating dudes that. That walk in slow motion towards the yeah the, the you got village, the you got the berserkers out, out there yeah. that are that are taking mushrooms and chewing on their shield and going into combat naked with just a bear skin draped over their back yeah doing that dick Which flap maneuver where that, you slap your belly button and you slap your butthole <laughs> <laughs> the Viking mating call yeah <laughs> it's like like in uh, in Crocodile Dundee when he's spinning the rope that was the Viking version of mm. of spinning that rope yeah they called it spinning the rope that shit hurts so much now. I used to be able to do that easily all the time for fun at parties. <laughs> you would just sit Whiplash there and, your and, dick, just pop, pop, and whip pop, your and dick back and hurt. forth. Now I can't even do like three slaps, and it feels like someone kicked me in the balls. You're getting old. Yeah, the balls are for sure. <laughs> My They're balls just are getting lower and lower. They're aging faster. Than you got to be careful that you don't like get them caught between your knees. <laughs> not that's not that bad yet, but they get caught under it's my legs when I sit. It is going to get there for sure. If you ever see an old man grab their dick and balls while they sit down, it's not because they're being rude. Well, it's because if they don't, they're going to sit move, on their balls. You have to move them out of the way or else, yeah, you're going to sit on them. Yeah. And that's the reason I don't wear skinny jeans anymore. I'm getting too old for skinny jeans because they just shove those balls right underneath my butt crack. Mm-hmm. And it hurts every time I sit down. Mm-hmm. Pinch the sack. Oh, oh, yeah, we got that. Sorry, I was checking to to see who the sponsors were for today. Let's do Actually, it. speaking of which, let's let's talk about our sponsors. 
So our first sponsor for today is something that the Vikings really could have used, and that is Policy Genius. Policy Genius. Vikings spent a lot of time dying. Well, everybody in history spent a lot of time dying, so it's a it's kind of unfortunate that Policy Genius didn't come around until now because people back then were missing out. If there's someone in your life who relies on your financial support, whether it's a child, an aging parent, a business partner, or even a Jarl, I added that myself. What's a Jarl? Uh, Jarl's a uh, Viking, like a chieftain. Uh, or a retard, or a disabled adult, or uh, dogs, cats. Yeah. A, a, a Jarl is a No, I'm disabled. just saying other things. Oh, I was like, wait, what, what does that have to do with a Jarl? <laughs> but anyway, if, if you have somebody that you're taking care of, you need some life insurance. Life insurance gives you the peace of mind that if something happens to you, like a tragic gardening accident, or you die in a raid on a, uh, you're raiding an English settlement, your loved ones have the financial cushion they need for rent, mortgage payments, loans, education costs, and everyday expenses. Mm-hmm. A little more cushion for the pushing. <laughs> Even if you have life insurance through your job, that may not be enough. Most people need up to 10 times more coverage than they have to properly provide for their families after they're gone. Mm-hmm. That's where Policy Genius can help. Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy insurance you need. Head over to policygenius.com forward slash Icono, I-C-O-N-O, and just answer a few questions. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. We should Anybody tell who's, them uh, to switch that to Icon. Uh, Icono's I'm, weird, right? Yeah. That, Icon's well, cooler. It's easier to say. Icono's cool. Well, that uh, icon is the the promo code that we told everybody to use. I think they kind of get a, a say in the matter. So it's Icono, I-C-O-N-O. The team of licensed expert at, experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply for the policy you choose. That's actually incredibly helpful because, to me, life insurance is just as confusing as taxes. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't understand Do you have life any insurance? of this shit. Do I look like I have life insurance? I yeah. I, I don't have anybody to take care of. Me neither. I don't give a shit if go. I die. I'm, I want to die. Is there like a, do they have a policy plan where they can help kill you and, <laughs> and someone gets money? It's it's unlife insurance where they yeah. guarantee that you will die by a specific date. Yeah. I'd pay for that. But. Yeah. And then the money goes to you. As soon as I have kids, I'm going to need some life insurance. You're never having kids. Unless it's on accident. No, not after those those Thank severe God, kicks in the balls. Out. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply for the policy you choose. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies, meaning they're not getting a, a cut just for selling you whatever they can. Which I went, I just signed up for for new internet yeah. at my apartment. All I was doing is I was going to I went to Spectrum, which Spectrum, you're not a sponsor of the show, so go fuck yourself. Mm-hmm. Spectrum's a shit company. Spectrum was the the, the DSL only inter- the AT and T internet at my place. Oh, AT and T is fucking terrible too. I, I tried to get Google I Fiber, but the the only Google Fiber that I could get at my place, I would have had to pay a bunch extra for, and it would have been like, like fuck, how much? It was it was out of my price range. Fuck that. <clears throat> so I got Spectrum instead. And I had to go pick up the modem and router, signed up for everything online, paid for everything online. All I needed to do was go to go to the Spectrum store and pick up the modem and router. As soon as I got in there, it was what should have taken five minutes ended up taking like 20 minutes because the guy was just trying to upsell me on fucking everything, Ugh. which drove me crazy. And I kept saying, no, I, I just want the modem and router that I've already paid for. I don't need a landline. I'm I'm not over the age of 70. I don't need a fucking landline. I don't need television, like cable television, because also I'm not over the age of 70. Anyway, Policy Genius isn't going to do that to you. <laughs> that was a weird rant in the middle of an ad. Well, it just it pissed me off because I just wanted to go in and pick up my modem and router, and this guy is you like... You got to just say, I understand that quit they, upselling me, give me my shit, I want to leave. I understand that they're making commission off of that. But that's the reason why they make you go in to but get it. Read the room, you. dude. I'm not. Look at me. Do you do you think that I'm here to to sign up for a landline and cable television? 
Uh, yeah, sort of. I'm not that old yet. I'm. I am not that old yet. You can trust the policy gene, uh, the policy genius team, to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. <laughs> Head to policygenius.com forward slash I-C-O-N-O to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com forward slash I-C-O-N-O. I kind of. And as always, our other sponsor for the show is Ghostbed. And Ghostbed is, uh, I think I mentioned on the last episode that I'm getting a Ghostbed for my new apartment. I'm Mm -hmm. so excited about it. The Iconoblast podcast is presented by ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Ghostbed has been a loyal sponsor of the drinking bros for five years now. And everyone here in the studio is in love over with their 69 mattresses months. And over 69 months. I forgot. I need to update the, the ad here. Ghostbed makes their high quality mattresses right here in the good old USA. And each mattress comes with a 20 year warranty. You can try a Ghostbed mattress for 101 nights, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can return it no questions asked. That's right. Their mattresses and pillows have cooling technology to help keep you cool at night, and you can buy a mattress for around $35 per month. They also have no money down, 0% zero for, zero financing plans. Ghostbed also offers bundles, so you can get everything you need in one convenient package. Just choose from their four mattresses and then pick your bundle. So whether you just need a mattress and a frame, or you want it all, like their cooling pillows and sheets, you can always get the best bang for your buck. Right now, Ghostbed is offering a flash sale where you can get 40% off when you buy a mattress and adjustable base, or 30% off of everything when you use the promo code DRINKINBROS. So head over to ghostbed.com forward slash DRINKINBROS and take advantage of all their awesome deals. That's ghostbed.com forward slash DRINKINBROS. Ghostbed, sleep so good it's scary. Yeah, I think they're coming out with uh, sleep companions. Sleep companions? Yeah, it's like a, a sex doll made out of the same fabric as the as the mattresses. Ooh, I'd get one of those, and yeah, I would also ten like percent. I would get a ghost off. bed dog bed. Oh yeah, they should make those too. Bo is getting old, and like I have to pile up two dog beds for her to actually. You want to take these stairs? I bought these. Uh, actually, yeah, th- take those them because I, I got them for for Taco, and he doesn't use them. So That's because Taco's stubborn. He literally will stare at them and then jump up. He ignores the stairs, but but uh, maybe Bo will actually use them. Those oh, she ribs. definitely would. I, I still have to lift her in and out of bed. So maybe this will help. As stated earlier, Scandinavians were mostly farmers by trade, not professional soldiers. As such, it was uncommon for the average person to own a specialized weapon like a sword. A sword didn't have any purpose outside of combat, aside from being a status symbol. An axe, on the other hand, could be used to cut down trees, chop firewood, or split the skulls of Christians during a raid. <laughs> Sick. They were the pretty much the, the multi-tools of the, the Middle Ages. They're still a pretty good tool now. They are, yeah. Plus, they left one hand free to hold a shield, which played a major role in melee combat throughout history. Swords were used by Scandinavians, although only the wealthy ones. There was even a specific brand of sword that was sought over all others. The Ulfbert. And we talked about the Ulfbert a little bit on the episodes with Josh. It was like the the Air Jordans of swords. swords. But he was kind of saying that the the spear and the axe was a little... It was better, right? Yeah, well, the... Uh, an axe is better because it well it, use it as it, a spear. It leaves a well. He was talking about the Dane axe. The Dane axe is a, a completely different monster. A Dane axe is as specialized as a, a sword is. Mm. <clears throat> like you're you're not going to be using a Dane axe to to it's chop firewood or, or cut down trees. It's it's like an oversized halberd, yeah. pretty much. So yeah. it's it's specifically a, a wartime weapon. <clears throat> oh, I got something in my throat. But Venus. the the one handed axes, one handed axes and spears were by far the most common weapons. And throughout history, spears are like the most common yeah. weapon used in combat because they're more effective than anything else. It takes like no Long, training, and they're easy to make. Yeah, they're easy to make. Takes very little metal. You don't even need any metal really because you can you just can sharpen a stick. Wood. You're going to keep people at a distance. It doesn't take all that much training to teach somebody to throw a spear, to poke somebody with a, a pointy object. I would like to learn to throw a spear. That sounds like fun. 
I don't think it would be that hard. I mean, that's like a well, well that, like getting that really good at it where you can. Hit I don't a think that would technically be a spear. I think that's more like a javelin or a, a pylon. Well, no, I guess it would be a. You have like a stack of ten spears. You, you learn to fight with the same spear that you can throw. Then it's like having a long range and short range weapon that is the exact same. Who was it? There was some. I don't remember off the top of my head, but there was some culture that used to go into combat with like a, a handful of spears and a shield, and they would use the spears. They would throw the spears at a distance sometimes, mm. but any any time it got in close, they would just have like a grip of weapons they could use to start stabbing people. But yeah, spears, by far the most effective weapon in military history aside from a stick. Because a stick's really easy to use too. You just beat somebody with it. Yeah. We talked about that before. We had that we had that debate about the samurai sword being the the most powerful weapon. Oh, ever. katanas are trash. But they're shit. Like I I well, was, I will sit there and debate all day with anybody into... who who tries to tell me that a katana is a good weapon. It's fucking trash. <laughs> well, the 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 part that I thought was interesting was that like a weapon that takes a super long time to master. That one person that masters it. Okay, yeah, maybe they could kill five guys with a stick. But you give that sword to some guy and say, go kill, they're going to kill themselves on accident. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why nunchucks are also shit weapons. Yeah. You because to... it, it takes so much time to master them, and they're still not even they're as good shitty. as a stick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, so if I had to choose between a sword, ma- like a an absolute master of whatever the martial fighting style with katanas is and five untrained dudes with sticks or with spears. Yeah. My spears, money is, is yeah. going to be, sticks, well, even, okay. So not even sti- five untrained dudes with like five foot long sticks. I would put my money on the dudes with sticks over the guy with the katana. I could be the guy with the katana, and I will for sure win against those five. I could go without a fucking sword and beat five guys with sticks. With st- with sticks? Five normal guys with sticks? Yeah, fuck. I would scare the shit out of them. You, it's oh, all about intimidation. Gonna, well, I mean, that's a, a a decent part of it, but if it's just like you're thrown Give into an Dane arena with, with five dudes that have sticks, and you got They're a katana. They're probably going to jump you. Yeah. And that's why that's why combat is played comes out the, down the way that it has though. for so long. If I'm in a badass samurai outfit <laughs> and they're like, "Why are they making five of us fight them?" They're gonna be scared. And if you get lucky and fucking slice that first guy, the rest are fucking done. Or, but if they're all like, "Dude, we're the we're the five guys that beat up everybody who think Possibly. they're hot shit," they're gonna beat everybody up. I I mean, pretty much every fight comes down to the amount of fight that the individual fighters have within them. Yeah. So one one dude with no weapon against five guys with battle axes that are all pussies. The dude, with, the dude with no weapon is probably going to do decently well unless one of those pussies decides, like, oh, I'm going I'm I'm to go chop. for it. Um, but if it, dude, the pokey hands that Josh was saying has changed my, like, changed everything in my head. Like, We've talked about that on the show before. We talked about that. But it made the, more. I don't know what Caesar it is. I don't know what it is, but it made more sense to me. And it changed. You paid attention to Josh. No, because he was like specifically saying, like the techniques and the moves he was showing, and the purpose of what you're doing is to just prevent them from being able to attack you, and like going for the hands and going for the arms and going for the legs. You're not trying to go for kills. You just all you have to do is like cut their finger, and then they can't use their weapon, and they'll leave. Yeah, well, not only that, in a in a like shield wall style combat, the guy directly across from you isn't the guy that you're necessarily trying to kill. He's the one that you're trying to distract. So one of the guys on either side of you, or a guy behind you with a spear, can like yeah. reach over your shoulder and and jab him in the neck. Like you're just there. Kinda yeah, see, but that's that's different him back. from what he was saying. Like all you you don't. <laughs> everyone's tr- trying to back away you just aim for their hands yeah that's uh, i mean and we, that's the shit like, we, that we talked about that during the the uh yeah i don't remember it, it, it being specific about just trying to wound it was always kills and formations and stabbing people in the neck you know it wasn't like no 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 you train specifically to attack their whatever's closest their limbs any 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 way to just get a cut on them 
Yeah, and which is something that that it, that it stood out from what he was saying that that made sense to me, and it changed my idea of how the fights were. It makes more sense, like how real fights were. It's like two two dickheads in high school like threatening each other, moving back and forth. But the whole time, what's happening is they're getting their hands <clears throat> cut, they're getting their pinky cut off, toe cut, a little slash on their chest or something. Yeah. And then they got to leave. Yeah, and the, the majority of, like, the vast majority of the deaths that happened during any of those old fights, they weren't they weren't during the, you know, the, the rugby scrum, like, in the, the main part of the battle. Yeah. It was when enough of the enemy team was, or the enemy army was intimidated that they started falling back, and then everybody would start running. That's when the deaths would happen. Then you they would happen everybody. during the route. That's when the you would route, chase them yeah, down yeah. And, and kill them. There'd be deaths here and there from mortal wounds that that were inflicted like during the the shield wall like when both armies were pressed up against each other yeah but it was mainly just trying to wound and maim the other people or d- just distract them enough that somebody else can get in a, a get good in blow a, to kill or wound. Uh, to like a good wounding blow yeah because also stabbing somebody is a it's not exactly an easy way to to kill someone unless you hit them in the right spots. So the majority of the wounds were just going to be that. Well, I can be imagine wounds. too, like the something that probably the Romans were doing that, that the people they were fighting weren't, and maybe the Vikings knew this. It seems like they did because well, they were so successful. Is when you're going into a combat, someone who's untrained is going to be like, I have to kill this person, and they're going to be. It's just like fighters in UFC or in MMA or any fights. Anyone that's like nervous and fighting for the first time, they're literally just trying to punch you in the face. Every fight I've been in, in the streets, they always try to punch you in the face. They're not going to be expecting repeated leg kicks that just yeah. slowly wear you down. Exactly, over time. and so that could be something like those, the Romans were probably one of the only people at the time be like literally just stab their hands. We'll kill them later. Well, the the biggest strength of the Romans was. They were one of the only cultures at the time that actually had a standing professional army that would train together Training, on a regular yeah. basis. So but that's what, something you would learn, right? Uh, that would be that would be a part of pretty much any any sort of uh, any sort of melee combat where you're going to be going after any exposed part that you can to inflict any sort of damage because it, it was uh, like we've talked about before. It was a lot like a, a high school fight where there's. A whole lot of pushing, a lot of yelling and name calling and intimidation. A yeah. couple hits here and there until one person gets intimidated enough that they run away. Right. Occasionally, you'll get or you a, wound a knockout enough punch. Or like, well, now I'm ineffective. Yeah, so it's the same um, as a kill. But the the strength of the Roman legion was not only the fact that they would swap out lines to make sure that that their front line was always rested. Yeah, but they were also trained to just stay together. Like that was that was the biggest Stay strength. Team. Yeah. Is no matter how intimidating the enemy is, they were trained that if we stick together and we hold it's the line, way a better chance to live. We are going to be much more likely to survive because yeah. if you turn around and and start running, then you're going to get run down and killed. And that's what what made the Roman legion so effective is they would work together as a unit, and they were taught like you know you stay where you are, you hold the line with yeah. everybody else on the line. Go over, we're talking about Romans too much. But I know. I, I, I think it's the same. Well, I think it's it's a similar Vikings type of combat. The, had... the Vikings fought with shield walls also. Uh, but oh, the, I didn't know that. the difference cool. with the Vikings, it, shield walls were were like, I mean, they are they are so prevalent throughout combat history that I mean, they they showed up in like every single culture across the world. Yeah. Uh, because fighting with the shield and the one handed weapon, by far the most common. Uh, most common type of combat yeah. uh you know an, an offense and a defensive tool Why yeah you want to be able to to block the other guy's weapon while still being able to to poke at him and the further away you can be while you're poking at the other guy the higher likelihood that you're not the one you're that's going to be one. getting your your fingers chopped off or getting stabbed in the face or in the neck or in the shoulders or anything right. like that that's <laughs> cool the next time i tr- next time some guy tries to stab me on old torf i'm not going to stab him in the chest i'm going to stab his hands uh, just because while he's trying to stab hands. me with his, he's going to try to stab me in the neck or in the face or in the stomach. I'm going to stab his arm. 
that was one of the things that surprised me also when I was doing the research on not just medieval combat, but ancient combat in general. Yeah. Is if you watch people that are going off of the existing manuals of how, like uh, training manuals uh, or any sort of documentation of how combat worked with ancient weapons, even swords, yeah. like knights with swords and stuff, a lot of those attacks are just distractions. They're distractions and small wounding attacks to leave an opening for a killing blow if you can. But most of all, you're just trying, just trying to, to wound them enough so they quit. Yeah, it's like death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, Wing Chi. yeah. I watched these. Uh, I don't know if it's accurate, but it seemed similar, like uh, medieval reenactment bullshit, but like more serious. Mm-hmm. And they're not doing anything. It's like they hide behind their shield and then they like try to, they like swinging like you know like yeah like like they look retarded Dude. but they're like trying to like just cut but your it, legs but up. it's super effective if you watch yeah, like anybody sw- swinging a light sword like super fast like jerking off like <laughs> back and forth anybody and up who... at the top by the head and down by the bottom and just like you're mowing your like you're using a weed whacker yeah and i mean you don't need to to put a whole lot of that's what josh is saying to keep it the to... thing there and just quick movements up yeah. and down and that's fucking cool and the fighting with the shield so dumb looking that's though. oh yeah put that in a movie you're just like what is this if <laughs> if you watch people that have been properly trained with with shield fighting like regardless of what the what the main hand weapon is if they're fighting with the shield if you look at them from the front you are pretty much not going to see anything but the shield because any way that they attack they're going to have the shield in front of them and they're going to be attacking around the shield yeah. or going up over the top of the shield they might occasionally use the shield to swing and try to create an opening but, but that's that creates an super opening for yeah yourself. super risky yeah so anytime you see somebody fighting with a, a shield and a, a single-handed weapon yeah. if they're not keeping the shield like directly in front of them to the point where it's almost blocking their vision they're not using it realistically. If they move that out of the way in, in any way, yeah. they're making but a mistake. It's also blocking their vision, which is... <sighs> well, you do it in a... To defensive, just in general. Like and the less you're also, vision you can see, the, the You're wor- actually going to be... You're going to be holding the shield out further from you than you would expect, because that's putting more of the shield in the enemy's uh, field of vision than it is it in also yours, makes so you, you can you can kind of peek around and, it. And then you're also... Like this, you think the guy's right behind the shield, and that there's more distance. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah there's. Uh, I've I've spent so many hours watching different forms of, of medieval and ancient melee combat. I think I'd rather be twice as far back with a long ass spear, and just try to poke around the shield and just keep stepping back. If anything, I I would probably want to be in a phalanx. Even though a, a phalanx, yeah, I don't is like a, I don't a like a claustrophobic. I'd rather be solo running through the woods with a bow and arrow. <laughs> Probably wouldn't. And a spear. Solo solo soldiers in in any combat situation usually don't last. No, I don't too mean. Long. I mean like, not even a part of the battle. I'd be hi- hidden, hiding like a ninja. That's the most likely way to survive. Yeah, is you don't get in a fight in the first place. No, fuck that. So we were talking about the Ulfbert swords, which were the Air Jordans of the Middle Ages. They yeah. were so coveted that it was common for people to make bootleg versions and sell them as a, uh, illegitimate Ulfbert blades. Oh yeah. He to started... date, only 170 verifiable Ulfbert swords have been found, and they have they like made they, so many fake ones. They engrave the name into the into the blade or into the hilt, and it's like a, a really recognizable. It's like a trademark. Yeah. As far as armor of the Viking goes, it was nothing like they are portrayed in video games or movies. The impracticality of a horned helmet is obvious once you consider how easy it would be for said horns to get caught on literally anything. Everything. Not to mention you are essentially giving your opponent handlebars for your head. Mm-hmm. Great for blowjobs, not so great for combat. <laughs> Unless you plan on sucking and fucking your way to victory, which does work sometimes. Yeah. Most Scandinavians didn't own a regular helmet, let alone a horned helmet. Like swords, helmets were expensive, placing them out of the price range of the average farmer. Those with enough money wore simple skull caps made of iron, and those without got traumatic brain injuries. Yeah. Or you could rent them like you're renting a car, or renting a or tuxedo they'd kill for a like wedding. A, a, a wolf and, and put the wolf skull on their head. Yeah, they would. I, I mean, I don't think that that would. Unless you pat it the inside. And it was like just on one side because it's small. It's like a little tiny little top hat on one side <laughs> of your head. 
No series about Vikings would be complete without mentioning the most Viking Viking to ever Viking. Ragnar Lothbrook. Mm -hmm. Those familiar with the History Channel show about Vikings called Vikings will know this name very well. Dude, you gotta watch it. It's it's I've almost watched it so many times. It's so good. Yeah, I gotta watch it. I loved it all the way up until the point where Ragnar dies. And then after Ragnar dies, I just didn't really give a fuck anymore. Mm. It is surprisingly accurate, though, in, in terms There's of a new the, one, the saga something? of Ragnar Lothbrok. Are they they're making a new one? It's already out. It's called oh, Valhalla. Shit. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Mm. I guess maybe I am old enough that I need to get cable. And then there's like another Viking show about to come out called North North Folk. Or North oh, Folk? Northman. North, Northman. Or Northman or something like that. I've seen previews for it. It looks that fucking looks awesome. Oh, that's a movie, not a show. Yeah. The saga of Ragnar is generally believed to be a fable, although some elements of truth are present. The consensus is that Ragnar is an amalgamation of other famous figures topped off with some embellishment. Considering the inclusion of dragons and deities, it's safe to say at least some of this is bullshit. No. I don't think dragons this ever really history. existed. Well, Ragnar may have not fought a dragon. They were just dinosaurs. That, well, I don't, I don't think Vikings they, they, fought dinosaurs either. I think they did. I don't think any human has ever fought a dinosaur unless they were you're just talking birds. about like somebody wrestling an alligator. Yeah. There is documented evidence of Ragnar's sons leading a rampage across England at the head of the largest Viking army ever assembled. It is known to history by the coolest fucking name ever, the Great Heathen Horde. The great That's heathen either the horde. Great Heathen Horde or the Great Pagan Horde. We should do a whole episode on them. It You could definitely fill out an episode. Down the road you when could, we need more Viking love. You could create an entire podcast out of... The Viking, Viking history. The, the great Viking horde. What are they called? Heathen? The great heathen horde. The great heathen. The great heathen horde. <laughs> As the story goes, after a failed raid on an English settlement, Ragnar was captured and thrown into a pit filled with venom and steaks, uh, venomous snakes. Venom and steaks. Venom and steaks. <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> like a good seared venom and steak. Mm-hmm. Ragnar was thrown into a pit filled with venomous snakes by King Ayala. This brought down the wrath of Ragnar's sons, who have fucking awesome names also. The Vikings really knew how to name shit. They came up with the coolest names for shit. So his sons were Halfdan Ragnarsson, Bjorn Ironside, Sigurd Snake in the Eye, and Ivar the Boneless. Sick. Although obviously destined by their names to lay the foundations of Norwegian black metal, they instead gathered an army and set out to avenge their father. (laughs) The sons of Ragnar, Ivar the Boneless. Ivar the Boneless is the He's one that... He's that mutant from the new Mad Max Free Road. <laughs> the one that uses the telescope. <laughs> Wait, there was somebody... Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, he, was the, he was the Terry Schiavo of the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Um, although... Uh, oh, there we go. The sons of Ragnar set sail for England with an army of angry Scandinavians at their back. The exact numbers are unknown, largely due to the difficulty of counting Vikings while they're actively trying to murder you, but historians estimate that it was somewhere in the low thousands. Honestly, even a a few hundred would have been enough to burn England to the ground. Mm. Whatever the size, it was imposing enough to earn the name that I'm sure has already been co-opted by a black metal band, the Great Heathen Army. In 865, the Viking horde landed in East Anglia, where King Edmund quickly bribed them with horses in return for not wrecking his kingdom. And it's funny how often this comes up throughout Viking history, where they would just fuck shit up so bad that eventually the people would give up fighting them and just be like, look, Dude, here's, here's some money, take... just leave us the fuck alone. Yeah, that's sweet. After camping for the winter in Thetford, they continued to York to track down King Aella. Upon their arrival, the heathen army easily overwhelmed the local troops and captured the bastard that killed their father. And that's where the fun really began. Have you ever heard of a blood eagle before? Blood eagle. No. According to legend, King Aiella was subjected to a form of torture and execution known as the blood eagle. His skin was flayed from his back, exposing his ribs, which were then separated from his spinal column and split open. His lungs were pulled from his torso and suspended behind him, resembling fleshy, bloody wings. Whoa. So, admittedly, this story is considered to be apocryphal because there's no 
documented evidence of a blood eagle ever be being carried out against anyone, but it's still a pretty fucking badass story. Yeah, they, and he survived this, right? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no. He, <laughs> I I would be amazed if he lived well, to the point that they actually pulled the lungs out of his back. He probably died from shock before that. Oh yeah, him being a king that probably made him. He's got God softer than the. Than no, the no, average no, 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 no. He has God powers, and he survived. Oh, yep. Yeah, he was he was destined by God by to be Will a leader. Lord. So yeah, he he mostly he's probably still alive. That's why they mostly. never found any evidence because he survived and put his shit back together. And left. <laughs> Is that where Humpty Dumpty comes from? <laughs> I guess. After doing away with the leadership, the horde set up camp and began giving locals the good old Viking treatment. After repeatedly being raided, the citizens of Northumbria got tired of being killed for their valuables, so they just started giving them up willingly, similar to what everybody else was doing before. Danegeld, or Danish tribute, was a tax paid to the horde in return for the safety of the locals. Danegeld. The, the Scandinavians essentially invented protection rackets like They're well over a thousand <laughs> years before the mafia did. That's fucking sweet. Yeah. Having thoroughly conquered Northumbria, the great heathen army left York and marched back to East Anglia to bug King Edmund again, which King Edmund had already paid him to leave, now they're but they back. fucked up everybody else. And like, well, nobody's fighting back. Let's go. Let's go find let's someone. Go to find fight. somebody that'll fight. So yeah, <laughs> they like went looking back to, for fights. Yeah, they went back it's to fucking... Edmund. Edmund had already bribed them to leave once, and he wasn't too keen on doing it again. Instead of spending his hard-earned money. Edmund threw the lives of his men at the problem instead, which I think that's also fucked up. It's like, I don't want to spend any money at that. Just send a bunch of peasants out there. Like literally just sending them into the fucking, just dropped them right in the, right in the meat grinder. Right in the meat grinder. Did he give him weapons or anything? Oh yeah, I'm I'm sure that they were like a, him up a militia, gave him some weapons and armor. And they're up. like, you oh yeah, this. go, go kill those Vikings. Vikings. You'll be fine. And no, they, they were not they fine. They were not. They all came back with scabs on their hands. Unfortunately for <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately for King Edmund, the heathen army was much better at violence than he was. His army was defeated, and Edmund himself was captured and executed. Damn. They just D- took over the place. D- dude, for 13 fucking years. Fuck yeah. This began a reign of terror that lasted for the next 13 years. The great heathen army raided English settlements and easily crushed any resistance they met until Alfred the Great came along. (laughs) Alfred the Great, king of Wessex, had already faced the heathen army multiple times without success. Like Edmund, Alfred gave up and began paying the Vikings to leave him the fuck alone, but like a bad case of herpes, they always came back. (laughs) The last straw for Alfred was when the Horde took the city of Wareham in 876. And this is actually a a pretty fucked up story if you read about it in detail. Yeah. (laughs) After multiple attempts to retake the city were repelled by the heathen army, Alfred fell back on the tried and true method of just paying them to fuck off. In return for the gold, the Viking army agreed to vacate the city and leave all of their hostages unharmed. The Vikings did in fact leave the city... And left a large pile of dead hostages behind. Fuck. It was the last time the English would put up with a broken promise from the Vikings. Word of the slaughter at Wareham spread across the country, causing soldiers and civilians alike to flock from neighboring areas to join King Alfred's army. Finally, after Whoa. over a decade of terror, they amassed an army large enough to fight back against the heathen horde. Then, in May of 878, the two armies clashed. According to a record of the battle, Alfred's men began, and I quote... <laughs> Fucking Alfred is the one that pulls this off? Alfred the Great, show a little bit of respect, he beat the great heathen horde. True. So this is a, a direct quote from, from documents. Fighting ferocious, uh, Alfred's men began, quote, fighting ferociously, forming a dense shield wall against the whole army of the pagans, and striving strong and bravely, at last Alfred gained the victory. He overthrew the pagans with great slaughter and smiting the fugitives. He pursued them as far as the fortress. The fortress that they're referring to was just a nearby fortress. I couldn't find the the name while I was doing the research. They, they I'm sure somebody knows the name. A fortress they took over. Or Pre-existing something. one. I I have a feeling that the majority of the stuff that they had while they were the majority of the they stuff that the horde had. Yeah, they were just 
taking shit that was already there. <clears throat> As the heathen army attempted to regroup in a nearby fortress, Alfred, Alfred surrounded the structure with his troops. The English army then proceeded to lay siege, removing any forms of food from the surrounding area. After two weeks of starvation, the great heathen army finally surrendered, handing over hostages and swearing an oath to lead Alfred's kingdom for good. So they handed over some of their own people. Uh, we talked about it during the, the series on Julius Caesar, that that was historically a pretty common thing that a would way happen. To is, make it yeah, you'd be like, here, take, you know, take trust each other. 15 or 20 of, of my people that are important. And if I go back on this deal, you can just kill them. Right. Which they wouldn't want to happen, so it was like a, a form of insurance. As part of the agreement between Alfred and the heathen army, one I of would the, never give you away as insurance, Coop. Well, it depends but, on what we're trading and what you get if you go. Like if it's a bunch of babes, maybe we, it, it, maybe I would. If I got what this guy Guthrum got, I'd probably go through with it. What'd he get? Well, okay, so one of the Viking leaders, known as Guthrum, agreed to be baptized into Christianity. Oh, but from shit. there, he just became a part of English society, and being a Viking just fucked everybody. He had his nice the makeup were, and his yeah. bleached hair. He kept his little uh, makeup kit with him. Yeah, he, <laughs> he kept everybody. his toiletry kit, his, his little <laughs> compact with his eyeshadow and a mirror. and Yeah, made himself look like the, the fields. looked like the lead singer of... Uh, yeah, what's that stupid ass band that seems Black Parade? My Chemical Romance. Mm. Ah. I fucking hate that band. Fucked everybody though. Yeah, just like the lead singer of My Chemical Romance, except yeah. Guthrum didn't give anybody herpes. As, as far, as, far as, as I know. know. <laughs> so Guthrum being baptized into Christianity would prove to be the beginning of the end of the Viking Age. And this is something that we talked about when we had Jack Mandeville on the show, is mm. there was no army that could that could fully defeat uh, defeat the Vikings. It was Christianity that defeated them. It was them becoming "quote unquote" civilized that brought them into the they Viking Age, them. where so many armies had failed before. Religion killed the Viking culture slowly over time. Although the Viking Age lasted another two hundred years, slowly but surely they integrated into English society. More and more Scandinavians converted to Christianity replacing their numerous pagan gods and traditions with monotheism. Scandinavians. English culture replaced Nordic culture, and by the 11th century, the Vikings were no more. Fuck. So they just, not, religion just killed them off. It was not beauty that killed the beast. It was God. What the fuck? They, they didn't even get like a cool way they died. Well, I guess that big battle. Uh, yeah, cool. I, I think the... The battle against the great heathen horde was like the last major conflict that the Vikings had. And then after that, they were like, well, you know, the way these, these English folk have everything set up is pretty sweet. I mean, they got some good food and they've got some, some nice buildings and all we got to do is reading. worship their God and then we can have sex with all their women. Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. But they, they were, they did so, it. but they're not a culture or a race. So technically it was just like the mob. Right, like the mafia was like, let's let's go straight. Stop, yeah, stop yeah, I mean, being would, criminals and just do the right thing. Yeah, that would be pretty close. It, I think that it would be for different reasons though. It wasn't like, like oh, we, we need to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. It's more like, hey, if we convert to this religion and integrate into this society, we'll get rich and, and have a easier. bunch of cool shit. It's going to be a lot easier than doing what we've been doing. So that's it's like cowboys. They're like more like cowboys than pirates. Mm -hmm. It was just like a necessity at the time, and then as things progressed... It was a job that eventually became obsolete. Yeah. Fuck. And that is the end of the Viking saga. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the end. There's there's a whole shitload we'll of holes we'll in that story, back. but yeah, we'll come... But for I, now. I want to do a whole series about Ragnar Lothbrok and talk about yeah. like, all I want to do a deep dive on a Viking battle similar to the deep dives you've done on some of those Roman I, battles. I really would like, like to do get in deep on a, on a I would like to do a, a multi-part series just about the Great Heathen Horde. Yeah. Because be there awesome. was so much insane shit that happened over the course of those 13 years that I mean you could fill up a lot of cool shit. Uh, yeah, you could you could do so much just so talking about that. So many scabs and scars on hands. <laughs> so many activities. <laughs> 
but yeah, there's there's a shitload of content that so can come out of talking about the, uh... Vikings, and like any part of their history, even just getting into, like I would have liked to have, we, we will in the future, but uh, I I would like to get more into the way that they fought, like their their strategies in combat yeah. and into individual battles, like the way, like you were saying, we, we went over the Battle of Elysia. And, yeah, which was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, thinking about that type of shit, that's like one of my parts, of, one of my favorite parts of yeah. learning about history. It'd be cool to compare out, it like, to. How like, did people used to kill each other? If the Vikings were able to do as much as they did and go as far as they did, they had to have comparable combat skills to the Romans. And it'd be cool to see what the differences are and compare them. Like, because it's obviously more seems more like quick or savage you know, or more violent. You know what it is? It's almost like the the antithesis of the way the Roman army fought, where the Roman army fought in a manner where it was a cohesive unit that would stick together. And I mean, the Vikings would to a certain degree also. Yeah. But the the average individual Scandinavian warrior was much more committed to the fight than the average Roman warrior. Yeah. They, it was more like uh, the... They had their mental the Vikings game was were, on point. The Vikings were, were more similar to the Gauls than they were to Romans, which is, I mean, they would have been more similar to, like, the Germanic tribes, really. Well, people are still what, obsessed about going to Valhalla and, and dying in battle, and that's all Viking shit. Yeah, that's that's something that also made the Spartans such, like, kind of inaccurately uh, depicted as legendary warriors. They yeah. had, uh, similar to yeah, the, the Scandinavians, they, they had a culture. America is fucking blowing it now. Oh, yeah, we, we have been for the last 10 to 15 years at this point. Just blowing it. Our um, mental look about ourselves is shit. They, they had cultures that were pretty much based around glorifying death, or glor- glorifying death in combat. Sick. Which makes you much more effective soldiers if you think the the quickest way to, I mean, look at, uh, well, I wouldn't say effective soldiers in modern times, but I was going to say, you know, you look at like like ISIS suicide bombers with that type They're of mentality where it's ticks. like, this is a, this is a, you know, fast track straight to, to heaven. Getting everything I want. All you got to do is and die in combat it. and, and you, you believe it wholeheartedly. I would do that. You're not going to fear death. You're, you're going to be actively trying to have the most glorious death possible. So when you go to babes. Valhalla, it's like you get you get to sit closer to Odin and fucking cheers him when you're drinking mead and bang all the Valkyries God, and shit. That sounds so cool. Yeah, I, I don't. I wish I, wish. I wish. I wish. Well, I wish I was religious real. just so I could. I That's could the, have the, the power of it. Yeah, you know, it's it's in religion is insanely powerful and important. Yeah, we because, touched on that stories. Yeah, talking about how important stories are. Humans in general are more attracted to stories than facts. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's easier for the average person to to digest. Yeah, and I mean that's why movies are popular. That's why books are popular. That's why comic books are popular. Like any believing is po- believing any is form powerful. Of story storytelling. Knowing something is knowledge, and it's important, and it is powerful. But like, and knowledge be- is power. Believing in something is the most powerful thing. I think. Absolutely. Because. It doesn't matter if it's true or not or this or that. If you believe it, you'll go as far as you need to go, mm-hmm. which is, that's just fucking weird. That's why religion's still around to this day is because there are evolutionary... But you don't even have to believe in, in religion. You can believe, it's like believing in anything. I believe in this podcast, so I'm mm-hmm. going to do whatever it takes for it to succeed, even if it's the worst podcast ever made. If I believe which it... Which I mean... It is. Arguably, it, it is, aside from Can I Pet Your Dog. <laughs> what is, is that a podcast? Two chicks talking about dogs. Oh. oh. Fucking boring. But. Anyway, that's it for the this episode of the Iconoblast Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Iconoblast Podcast. You can follow me at Coop Nukem. You can follow Joel at Joel R. Benner. <laughs> You can also check out the sweet lighting setup that Joel has going on in here if you go to the Drinking Bros History Channel on YouTube, where you can join us every single Monday night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Hang out in the chat. And hang out in the chat. Joel and I are in the chat uh, answering questions and making dick and fart jokes just like we do on the show. Yeah. Anything else we need to plug? Uh, Just follow the Iconoblast Instagram. Yeah, Iconoblast Instagram is going to have all the information that you need. 
tells you the topics, future topics. Well, we we don't really tell the future topics. Yeah, I generally don't know what the topic's going to be until a few days before. But the, you can see before the show. Instagram's a cool way to see the topics and see clips mm-hmm. from prior shows. And if something catches your fancy, you can go listen to it. You can also message us on Instagram. You can message either me hit or Joel up, hit us or up on hit us up on the Iconoblast Instagram account. We run the 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 page. You're not we gonna... respond to every single message that we get. We try to. Sometimes it might take a couple of days, but we get to them. Yeah, we we do get around to them eventually. It used to be every day, but we have a lot of fans now. It used to be easier to keep up with all of the messages, but now it yeah, it which is cool. takes some time. It's I a good usually, problem to have. usually spend about an hour each day yeah. going through my own personal messages and then going through some of the back messages on the Insta- yeah. or the Iconoblast well, account. That's, that's one thing I noticed, too, since we share it. If you have read one, it'll gray out for me, and so I won't, I'll think I already read it. So I even go through and just sit and read through them all and be like, oh, okay, Coop handled this one. Okay, yeah, I'll I, handle this one. I can always tell if if it's been if the message has been addressed or not, depending on whether or not there's a response to it. If there's right. a response to it, good. good. If not, yeah. you're going to get a response. So if you yeah. message us on Instagram or actually like and subscribe to the Drinking Bros History YouTube channel and drop yeah. a comment down below the video, we'll respond to those too. Fuck yeah, we will. So anyway, we'll see you next week. Uh, Not sure what the topic is yet. It'll be a surprise to all of us. That's it for this episode of the Iconoblast (laughs) Podcast. My name is Matt Cooper. I'm Joel Benner. And we're reminding you to never take anything at face value. See you later. Fuck me.